All right, on the bench today, we have the microwatt super lead that I just built. Or actually, I mean, I built it quite some time ago, but uh, it's literally a Marshall super lead circuit. Same amount of knobs. I mean, I haven't labeled them yet, but it's got a 12 AU7 in the output stage as opposed to four EL34s. And it's a whole lot smaller, a whole lot, runs a whole lot cooler and was a hell of a lot cheaper. <laughs> now, I, I this is a Hammond chassis of some kind that I just chucked up and these are not the standard type Marshall knobs. These are smaller, a little, little shorter uh, than the normal knobs. Uh, and they actually, they fit perfect on here. The, the potentiometers on the inside are as close together as they can possibly be. Now, I built this thing. Uh, I, I wanted to make it sound as realistic as possible, as close to the famed super lead as possible. I even went as far as to put a fixed bias supply in here as opposed to cathode bias. Now, you might be thinking, why in the hell would you why would why in the hell would you do fixed bias when you can clearly do cathode bias on a small amp like this and get away with it? Well, I wanted this I wanted to be able to tweak the tone on this thing to a T. And you don't even have to put a 12 AU7 in here. I can easily stick a 12 AT7, a Y7, any 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 tube that's got this pin out, I can put it in here, bias it up, and it'll actually sound it'll, it'll have a little different sound, but it'll work. This transformer here, these are these are specialty transformers, by the way, from Classic Tone. Um that's a 25K to 8 ohm, which I had no clue you could even make a transformer with that kind of ratio and have it sound good. But apparently it can be done, so... And it's only rated at 1 watt. And... Actually, I've done the math, and it, it appears that with this output stage, it should put out about a little over a watt. Um, I just... Typical... Uh, uh, tag board here that I drilled myself all the stuff. I designed myself uh, The power supply I went intentionally light you see these caps aren't as big as they could be I've seen people stick in you know these giant hundreds of microfarad caps. These are eight microfarad. This is a, a 16 I think if I remember right not very big and I wanted that for a reason and No, that's not the cause of hum in this amplifier. It's actually a wire that's not being shielded properly. I'm too lazy to go and change it right now, but this actually filters the hum nice enough, but it sags at the proper level. When you crank this amp, it'll sag just like a big amp will. Um, now I was actually the biggest part I guesstimated on. Uh, I didn't know how downsized to go, but uh, now... I actually did have to, one thing I failed to mention was that I re rebias all the stages because this thing only runs on 270 volts. And so all these uh, cathode bias resistors in the front end, I had to redo all those. I had to recalculate the current because it was a little different and the reduced voltage would have skewed it and would have distorted more than, you know, what should have been. So I had to rebias all that. And that does give a little less headroom that only 270 volts as opposed to what, like 400, 410, somewhere around there, maybe even higher than that. Um, that was the only, that was the real challenge. That was the only, only major challenge I think uh, designing this was was rebiasing everything. But the topology I tried to keep exactly the same. I'll show you the schematic. Oh, and by the way, this circuit is literally the same. You've got a presence knob, treble, middle, bass and then your two different volume inputs. Now, if you've never used a Marshall Plexi or a Super Lead, these two inputs like affect each other. Like if you have one all the way down and have this one up, it, it, it'll, it'll dim it out. They're, they're totally connected together. I'll show you in the schematic. So here is the schematic, or part of it anyway. This is the front end of it. Um, and these, these are the two uh, input knobs I was talking about. You've got a bright cap on one of them for the bright channel. 
and for the normal channel, it, they're connected. They're still connected here, and they've got another cap here. So it's like they totally affect each other. And there's four inputs total, high gain, a low gain for the bright channel, high gain, a low gain for the normal, as you probably know. And then this thing drives the tone stack, which is just your normal tone stack. And now the negative feedback was a little weird because at the end of this transformer, 25K to 8, if you do the math on that, you'll know that getting any kind of voltage out of that, it, the voltage is so small that it hardly does anything. So I had to play around with this value a little bit. And I think that the negative feedback knob could do more. I'm, the setup is still a prototype. I'm still tweaking it to get it to be perfect, but... <clears throat> It sounds pretty good as of now, so this is this is mostly going to stay the same, I imagine. Still the same driver circuitry. Um, the only difference between this and the real thing is that there's a little more gain at the end of this than there should be. In other words, it's going to push these harder than you'd push a quartet of EL34s. Other than that, it is the same. And I'm actually astounded on how accurate this thing sounds. I mean, I don't know how it sounds to the YouTube video compared to a, a real thing, but it is pretty damn close. Power supply, as I said, real simple. Oh, that's a 22 mic. Okay, 22 microfarad is the input cap there. And these are solid state rectifiers. These are just, you know, your 1 in 4005 diodes. And then... The uh, the fixed bias supply, I just, I mean, it was real simple. It's not even regulated, which actually I really should regulate it because if there's any mains voltage change, the tone of this amp really suffers, actually. It might bias too hot or too cold. Actually, you only really notice when it biases too cold, but uh, I kind of just, I mean, I try and document these things when I sit down and design these, and... I mean, it's your typical thing. I mean, you got <clears throat> your IC. Uh, power port there. You got your fuse. And then a single uh, output jack for the speaker. And unfortunately, this transformer only has an 8-ohm tap. So uh, you can't really... You can't really do... Uh, it'll only do 8-ohms. But, uh, yeah, I'm sure this design could be extrapolated further. I'm sure you could, instead of running it into a 12AU7 to give one watt, you could probably run it into a, a you know, single-ended EL84 and get, like, four or five watts. Who knows? There's, there's many possibilities. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep tweaking this amp and uh, see if I can get this thing to sound even better.